It's late summer and it's been a busy season in the vineyard. We've done the usual tasks. Mow the floor, trim the shoots, spray the grapes. You've seen plenty of that. In this video, we'll give you an update on something we started in the spring to see how it turned out. We'll show you how we determine that our grapes are ready to be picked. And we'll show you how we're managing wildlife so that they're not eating the grapes. And finally, we'll show you one job that we never had to do before. And we won't make you wait until the end of the video to see it. It's the first segment right after this. It's gotten harder and harder to open and close this gate. The hardware that keeps it closed is always jammed. We thought it was because the post on either side of the gate had shifted, putting pressure on the latch. And as it turns out, we were right. This post has shifted quite a bit because it's broken off underground, it's rotted. We need to replace this post before it falls over. This is an eight year old, five inches by eight feet, treated wooden fence post. We checked all the other wooden posts in the vineyard, but this was the only one that was rotted. We definitely want to replace this rusty gate hardware. Before we replace this post, we need to detach the deer fencing. We also need to take off this post extension. And we need to remove the wire lower border, which is attached to the post with U-nails. Now comes the hard part. We need to dig out the rest of the post. We want the new post to be in exactly the same position. For tools, we brought a shovel, a post hole digger, and a bar that we can use for digging and tamping. We tried splitting the post, but were unsuccessful. So we had to dig around the sides using a post hole digger and shovel. The tape on the handles of the post hole digger show us when we're down about two feet. With the old post finally out, we were ready to place the new one. We marked a two foot line on the post so that we could be sure it was fully seated. Once the post was placed in the hole, we added dirt and made sure that it was plumb. The dirt was tamped firmly into place as we filled. With the new post in place, we reattach the cord that holds the polypropylene deer fence. We stapled the deer fence into the post and attached the wire border with U-nails.
we attached new hardware to both the post and the gate. With the new post and hardware, the gate latches and unlatches easily. We never had to replace a fence post before. Now we're wondering how hard it'll be if we have to replace a trellis post with a full canopy. It's going to be tough. We have a second trail cam, so we're going to put this one up to see what's going on on this side of the vineyard. We'll see images from this camera later in this video. And this is an update. If you remember from hidden video number one, we treated these newer plants with some growth spray. You did find hidden video number one, didn't you? If you got here by spotting the clues in other videos, congratulations. You have sharp eyes and great deductive skills. Anyway, it seems to have worked, and they've really taken off lately. As usual, we've added netting to try to deter the birds and hope for the raccoons. What you see here is a result of four different times coming to the vineyard to hang the nets and place the clips. We reuse the nets from year to year. Since they're only in place for about two months, they don't get broken down by the sun and the weather the way they would if they were up longer. We're using this type of clip now compared to what we used to use. It's not as durable, but it's much easier to place and remove. We're hoping this wire will keep the raccoons off the post. So far, we've only added it to five posts. We'll see how it works, and if it does well, we may add it to the others. We used wire fencing, and we left plenty of sharp points sticking out to deter the raccoons. We attach these to the trellis posts just below the nets. We tried other wildlife deterrents that we saw on the internet. We scattered bowls of ammonia between the vines. We tried placing shavings of Irish spring soap around the perimeter of the vineyard. We circled the rows with red pepper. and we sprayed lots of this foul-smelling liquid. But as the video from the second trail cam shows, only the wire around the posts deters the raccoons. This guy sniffed, but did not drink the ammonia. This is a refractometer. It helps us determine how much sugar is in our grapes. It has an eyelet at one end and a prism at the other. Juice from the grapes you are testing is squeezed under the prism. The cover is closed and the device is held up to the light. This is what you see. These chambersons are at about bricks 15 right now. Bricks is a measure of sugar content in the juice. When veraison starts, we take weekly samples of the vineyard. 
as we approach harvest, we sample more frequently. We record the readings to allow us to track the grape ripening. We would like the Chambersons to end up at above 21 bricks and the Riesling somewhere between 18 and 22. It's getting close to harvest. Our final diary entry for this year will cover the harvest, end of season chores, and anything unexpected that pops up that we need to take care of before we put the vineyard to bed for the winter. Thanks for watching. See you at the next video.